Hello everyone, this is Dr. Omar Shakori and today we will speak about how to protect yourself and the people you are caring for from the infection with coronavirus COVID-19. This is based on Australian guidelines. I'm Dr. Omar Shakori, I'm accident and emergency surgeon. Now, our learning objectives, our learning objectives are understanding the basics about COVID-19 virus, which includes how it is spread. Also, describe what you can do to protect yourself and others. Know what to do if you develop symptoms and know what to do if the person you are carrying for develops symptoms also also we want to learn about the difference between the myths and facts about covid 19. so background of this virus coronaviruses are family of viruses that can make a human sick the new coronavirus diseases, officially known as COVID-19, originated in China in 2019 and has since spread around the world. Most people, around 80% who become infected with COVID-19, will, expre will experience all, only mild symptoms and fully recovered after this infection. Some people, around 50% who become infected, will experience moderate symptoms, and about 5% only will develop severe symptoms and get very sick. It's important to know how to protect yourself and your family and your community. So what are the signs and symptoms. What are the signs and symptoms? The most common symptoms of COVID-19 are fever, cough, sore throat, fatigue, shortness of breath. Not everyone who has symptoms like this has COVID-19. This is very important note, as there are several other illnesses that can cause also these symptoms. So, for coronavirus, remember, we have fever, we have cough, we have shortness of breath, we have sore throat. And there are many other symptoms, but those are the most common symptoms and signs for coronavirus infection. So, who are the high risky population? Who are the higher risk population? Some people at higher risk for developing serious illnesses illness from covid 19. who are these people the older people the old age people and the people with underlying medical problem like blood pressure high blood pressure hypertension heart problem diabetes patient respiratory disease patient or immune deficiency patient for australia they are speaking about aboriginal and terrestrial islander people experience higher rate of chronic diseases compared to other australian people so they may be at higher risk of serious illnesses now who can catch the virus anyone anybody can be infected covid 19 does not discriminate between race gender therefore we are all at risk of infection we all need to be safe there are important things that we can do to protect ourselves and families So how 
the COVID-19 spread. Until now, until now, they can approve that COVID spread from person to person through droplet transmission, not airborne transmission. Until this moment, this is um, 29th of March 2020. This is the date. Until now, they just proved that droplet transmission can transmission can spread the virus from person to person. Droplets are small. What are what what are the droplets? The the droplets are small pieces of saliva, which are produced when a person cough or sneeze. And those droplets usually travel no more than one meter through the air that's why we need to stay uh, one meter away from any other person now how does covid 19 spread we will continue you can become infected if you have a close contact with an infected person who cough or sneeze or you touch on you touch an object like door handle which is contaminated from a cough or a sneeze from a person with COVID-19 and touch your eyes, nose or mouth. Droplet cannot go through the skin and can only lead to infection if they touch your mouth, nose or your eyes so stop the spread we are all responsible it's a group effort it's important that everyone helps to prevent the spread of COVID-19 encourage standard precaution among guests co-worker family friends people you care for any visitor lead by example take them by example stop the secret the spread the next sections will show you the basic measures you can make and take care of your own health and protect others this include how you can decrease the risk of people in your care becoming infected with covid 19 Using the same principles, you can also protect yourself and those in your care from other illnesses like influenza, the uh, uh, well-known the flu. So, the first thing is hand washing. Hand washing, the most important thing you can do to protect yourself is to wash your hand regularly with soups, with soap and water or rubbing an alcohol based uh, uh, sensitizer onto your hand this is important because washing your hand kills viruses that may be on your hand there are some video you can watch them on YouTube I will put those links below this video how to do hand wrap and how to do hand wash so hand wash and hand drop you can see them in the links below this video in another video make sure that people in your care also wash their hands regularly this is especially important after going to toilet blowing their nose and before and after eating if you work in a residential uh, or health facility make sure that visitor wash their hands on entering and leaving the facility and before and after visiting any resident Put up signs to remind people and make sure there are hand washing stations or hand wrap available for visitors 
to use. Try not to touch your face. This is the second important thing. So first, hand washing. Second, try not to touch your face. Avoid touching your face as much as possible. This is important because virus containing droplets on your hands can be transmitted to your eyes, mouth or nose where they can infect you. Most of us touch our face many times per hour without realizing. Try to stop yourself touching your face and encourage others to do the same. Number three in how to avoid infection. Number three is the social distancing. Put a distance between you and other people so maintain at least 1.5 meter one and a half meter distance between yourself and anyone who is coughing or sneezing this is important because if you are too close to someone you might breathe in a droplet that they cough or sneeze if you are farther away than one and one and a half meter it's very unlikely that you will breathe in a droplet that might contain covid 19. so help those help those that you care for be keeping one and a half meter between themselves and others this is especially important if you are out and about. Avoid large public gathering unless it is essential. Remember that COVID-19 can be transmitted by droplets that can be passed from hand to hand including hands shake so avoid hand shakes for now here are some video i will put this link also in the description below you can find some way uh, some ways to greet people but not hand shakes Now, Australian government advice on social distan distancing is regular being uploaded and it is updated. I will keep this link also for you. You can check it later on below in the description. Number four is to use a good respiratory hygiene. Make sure that you and the people around you follow good respiratory hygiene. This means covering your mouth and nose when you cough and or sneeze with a tissue that you put in the, uh, in the bent straight after use or your bent elbow or respiratory hygiene is important because droplets spread virus by following good respiratory hygiene you catch any droplet that might might be produced and this protects people around you from viruses including covid 19. Remind those in your care to use good respiratory hygiene. Make sure that when you are out and about you care uh, and about you carry tissues for yourself and others to use. Remind those in your care to clean their hands after coughing or sneezing. Now this is a picture from World World Health Organization the WHO how to protect others from getting sick the good respiratory etiquette 
When coughing or sneezing, cover the mouth and nose with a flexed elbow or tissue as you see in this picture. And then throw this tissue into the closed bin immediately after use. Also, you have to clean your hands with alcohol-based and alcohol-based hand drop or soap and waters after coughing or sneezing and when caring for a sick people. What about mask? Wearing a face mask in public won't help to protect you from infection. Only wear the mask if you are sick with symptoms that might be due to COVID-19, especially coughing or looking after someone who may have COVID-19. There is a shortage of masks and we need to save them for use when they are needed for sick people or for those looking for them. Remember, the best way to protect yourself and others against COVID-19 are regularly wash your hand, use respiratory etiquette to catch your cough or sneeze with a tissue or in the bend of your elbow. Maintain social distancing. Now, what about cleaning and disinfection? Regular cleaning of your environment at home, in your car, and at work is essential. This is because droplets from an infected person can fall on a surface and be transferred to someone else's hands if they touch that surface. You should regularly clean frequently touched surfaces for example the tables the doorknobs and light switches to clean to clean use a detergent solution according to the manufacturer label remember to check the product label for any precautions you should take when using it such as wearing gloves or making sure you have a good ventilation now cleaning in health and residential care setting the routine environmental cleaning requirements can be divided into two groups the first group is the frequently touched surfaces and the second group is the minimally touched surfaces. The frequently touched surfaces like the doors, handles and the bed, bed, uh, uh, the bed rails and table tops and light switches. This is the frequently touched surfaces. This should be cleaned frequently also by detergent solution. And what about the minimally touched surfaces here like the floors, the ceiling, the walls and the blinds. Here we will use also detergent solution but no need for frequently cleaning so as you see here the walls and the blinds should be cleaned when uh, they are visibly dusty or soiled the windows uh, curtain, uh, curtain should be regularly changed in addition to being cleaned when soiled the sinks and passing should be cleaned on a regular basis. What about food safety? Now, from the information we know, at the moment, COVID-19 does not seem to be spread by food. However, 
you should still make sure you prepare food safely to make sure that you and others don't get sick from other diseases this is important when you are preparing food for yourself and for those in your care so the food safety and the preparation include washing hands between handling raw and cooked food cooking and proper handling of meat product using different chopping boards for raw meats and cooked food ensuring all meats are cooked thoroughly when you are preparing food you should always practice good respiratory etiquette and if you have symptoms of respiratory illness you should avoid preparing food for other people so practice food safety even in area experience outbreak you may follow this instruction the meat products can be safely consumed if these items are cooked thoroughly and properly handled use different chopping board again and knives for raw meat and cooked food also remember to wash your hand between handling raw and cooked food this is the who instruction on safe food preparation now how you will manage the visitors managing visitors keeping safe from covid 19 does not mean having no social life for yourself or those in your care it's important to maintain relationships people who are unwell should be advised to stay in their own homes and not visit others this is particularly important to enforce in residential settings where people should stay in their own room visitors to resi uh, 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 residential facilities should be encouraged to wash their hands on entering and exit exiting exiting the facility and before and after visiting any resident you can reduce your risk you can reduce your risk of infection by asking visitor to your own home to do this also now how to take people in your care out in a public regular hand hygiene social distancing and respiratory etiquette are essential in public setting practice hand hygiene after touching shared surfaces for example in shops in cafes or in uh, or on public trans transport to maintain social distancing you should avoid large public gatherings unless it is essential now protecting yourself and others in the workplace you can help keep yourself and others safe by practicing good infection and the prevention and control in your workplace so you can use the same principle again and again at work and at home clean your hands regularly practice social distancing practice respiratory etiquette now practical tips for protecting yourself and others in the workplace put marks on the floor to ensure customers stand at least one and a half meters away from the counter and from each other practice hand hygiene between customers if you are in an open plan office 
make sure there is at least one and a half meter between yourself and the next workstation have meetings in a large enough rooms for everyone to sit one and a half meters apart mark the disc with a tape ensure you wipe down surfaces in your work area regularly if you are doing household deliveries if possible avoid face-to-face -face contact with those inside the house so leave goods at the front door and call the house occupant to let them know their delivery has arrived if you need to have face-to-face -face contact with those inside the house then stand at least one and a half meter back from the door when they uh, uh, answer practice also practice hand hygiene when you get back in the car after every delivery wipe down surfaces in your car including steering wheel and door handles regularly remember to stay home when you are sick stay home when you are sick So again and again, keeping yourself and others safe. Remember, while COVID-19 can seem scary, you can help to stop it, to stop it spreading. Protect yourself and those in your care. This is most important things you can do. Wash your hands. Make sure those in your care also do the same. Practice respiratory etiquette and make sure those in your care also do the same. Practice social distances to make sure those in you and make sure that those in your care do the same. Currently, many cases of coronavirus are spreading in Australia and in other countries therefore if you are a frontline healthcare worker carrier volunteer or have a close contact with a high risk person and you have recently traveled overseas you may be asked to stay away from work for a certain period after your return this link, I will put also this link uh, uh, for the latest updates and recommendation regarding COVID-19, uh, especially according to Australian guideline. What if I develop symptoms of COVID-19? If you develop symptoms such as fever, dry cough, sore throat, and fatigue, stay at home and practice standard infection control precautions. Seek medical advice. It's important to call ahead first. In Australia, go to this link or call for this number or call your usual care provider. Each country give their own numbers for calling and seeking medical advice. So look for this number. Inform also you have to inform your workplace. What if someone in my care develops symptoms of COVID-19? If someone in your care has symptoms of COVID-19, keep them at home or if they are in a group facility, keep them isolated in their own rooms. Ensure they practice standard infection control precautions and seek medical advice promptly. Remember to call ahead first. If someone in your care is suspected by a medical professional as having COVID-19, you will need to practice 
Further infection control measures including the use of appropriate PPE, which is personal protective equipment. You will need to seek further advice on this from your local public health units or infection control specialist. Now here are some facts. The new coronavirus can be transmitted in area with hot and humid climate. So hot weather is not a protective against COVID-19. This is the WHO instruction. Other fact is the cold weather and the snow cannot kill the new coronavirus. So neither the hot, neither the cold will kill the virus. Also, taking a hot bath does not prevent the new coronavirus. Taking a hot bath does not prevent coronavirus infection. The new coronavirus cannot be transmitted through mosquito bite. Until now, the new coronavirus cannot be transmitted through mosquito bite. Now, are the hand dryers, dryers effective in killing the new coronavirus? No, the hand dryers are not effective, uh, not effective in killing COVID-19. Can ultraviolet disinfection lamp kill the new coronavirus? UV lamps should not be used to sterilize hands and other area of skin as UV radiation can cause skin irritation. So we cannot use it just to kill the viruses. How effective are the thermal scanner in the de in detecting people infected with the new coronavirus? And this is the, the, the uh, uh, thermal scanner used in the hospitals, in the streets, in the airlines, airports thermal scanner are effective in detecting people who have developed a fever for example uh, it's mean having a higher than normal body temperature because of infection with the new corona virus so this thermal scanner detect the high temperature in a patient and the high temperature is one of the features of corona virus infection can spraying alcohol or chlorine all over your body kill the new virus unfortunately no spraying alcohol or chlorine all over your body will not kill viruses that have already entered your body. Do vaccine against pneumonia protect you against the new coronavirus? No, vaccines against pneumonia such as pneumococcal vaccine, hemophilus influenza vaccine do not provide protection against the new coronavirus. Can regularly rinsing your nose with saline help prevent infection with the new coronavirus? Unfortunately, no also. Can eating garlic help prevent infection with the new coronavirus? Garlic is healthy food that may have some antimicrobial properties, but however, there is no evidence from the current outbreak that eating garlic has protected people from the new coronavirus. Does the people, does the new coronavirus if, uh, uh, affect older people or are younger people are also susceptible? People of all ages can be infected with the new coronavirus. Are antibiotics effective in preventing and treating the new coronavirus? No antibiotics do not work against viruses, only against bacteria. Are there any specific medication to prevent or treat 
the new coronavirus up to date there is no specific medicine recommended to prevent or treat the new coronavirus stay informed on the latest developments about COVID-19 up-to-date information I will share with you this link below this video to stay updated and monitor news update regarding local events and gatherings and follow current advice given by your national and local public health authority key messages for COVID-19 you can help protect yourself your family your workplace and your community by practice regular hand hygiene practice social distancing practice respiratory etiquette seek medical advice remember to call first and inform your workplace if you have symptoms Congratulations, you have successfully completed this course and this lecture on COVID-19, the novel coronavirus. You should now have the ability to understand the basics about COVID-19 virus, including how it's spread. Describe what you can do to protect yourself and others and know what to do if you develop symptoms and know what to do if the person you are caring for develop symptoms and tell a difference between myth and facts about COVID-19. Thank you for joining me in this lecture. Please don't forget to share this lecture and this course with other friends that you care about and other family members don't forget also to subscribe to this channel all the links and push the bell icon all the links that i mentioned inside this class will be written below you can find them below this video have a nice day everyone and goodbye